Today I want to jump back into the sample plan that I've been putting together for Jim and Joan Sample. Now Jim and Joan Sample are a made up client. Uh, they're not a, a real client, but the facts are very similar to what a lot of retirees face. And so by walking through this sample plan with you, I can show you how some of the decisions can play out in real life. And so with Jim and Joan, we are assuming that they are 65 and 64, that they are not yet retired, they haven't yet started their social security, and they're looking at these decisions. And when I put the plan together in the main planning software, I was able to show you that it made sense for them to start social security earlier rather than later, because in their situation, uh, they had saved a, a lot of money into their retirement accounts, uh, because of the age difference and the amount of the Social Security, by starting earlier, they were able to allow their accounts to grow more. And the way that they're invested, that ended up being a better result for them long term, as well as better for their family. Now, that was different than the plan that I put together for Randy uh, and Jenny, example, uh, because in that plan, Randy and Jenny had less assets that they had saved. They still had saved very nicely and they had a different mix of age and other income and the cash flow needs. And so in their situation, it made sense to uh, wait to start Social Security. These decisions are very personalized. It's going to depend on your ages, your amount of Social Security, your expected longevity, your other income sources, the assets that you've saved, how you're willing to invest those assets, as well as, um, you know, all of the different pieces working together. And so you have to look at Social Security in light of your whole financial plan to know what is best for you. And so today I want to look at the Social Security software with the information from Jim and Joan Zample. I've taken the information from my other software package. I've plugged it into this social security software so that we can look at how does their social security decision look just looking at only the social security decision. It's a good starting place for analyzing social security. So what we're seeing here is uh, Jim and Joan, I've got their full retirement age, Social Security amounts entered in. So for Jim, that was 3,286. For Joan, that was 2,354. I've told the plan to assume that they might live five years shorter or five years longer. And I allowed this, this to set their lifespan based upon average life expectancy today for somebody their age. So it assumes that Jim will live to 87 and Joan to 92. That is for social security planning purposes. In the planning software, I run it all the way out to age 100 because I don't want anyone to run out of money while they're still living. And so we will look in the planning software all the way out to age 100. But for the purposes of doing this social security analysis, we'll look at what if they live to their average life expectancy that social security administration expects them to live to or five years shorter or five years longer. Now, as I said, life expectancy plays into the decision uh, and the analysis in the recommendation. I also have told the program to assume that there's a 2% cost of living adjustment each and every year. That's the same cost of living adjustment that I have in the other plan for Social Security. I always assume it's going to be less than inflation because it typically does not keep up with inflation. There's been some studies done along that regard. And so by assuming a little bit lower cost of living adjustment, we're being conservative in what we think this might grow to. Now I'm going to say save and view their results. And the program is going to run the analysis and it's going to tell us what is their primary recommendation. Uh, for them, it is to start at age 70. And when we look at this on the screen, it tells us what their monthly benefit would be at that point in time and what their lifetime benefits would be. If they lived a life expectancy, 
they both live to that life expectancy, they both pass away five years earlier, or they both live five years longer. What is their total benefits? Now, the primary strategy on this uh, for them is going to be filing at age 70. And so if I come over to the strategy list, we'll see the primary strategy is they each turn on benefits at age 70. And then when Jim passes away, because he's older and we're assuming he lives uh, to uh, only 87, that Joan then gets to take the survivor benefit, which would be the higher of the two benefits. And in their case, that would be Jim's benefit, what it had grown to at that point in time. The program gives us the numbers for all of the other options that uh, are plugged in here. If they start early, if they start at full retirement age. Uh, and then I built a strategy for them that Joan would go ahead and start at full retirement age and Jim would wait to age 70. And we're going to compare that strategy here in a minute. On this strategy list, it gives us the total lifetime benefits for each of those strategies. Again, if they live to their normal life expectancy or five years less or five years more. And that way we can compare how these strategies look at different points in time. What we want to do now is compare the strategy of uh, what if they were to start right away versus waiting all the way to age 70. How does that impact them? Now, if they were to start right away, they get money coming in sooner and that money accumulates um, by the time they would reach age 70, they would have gotten a quarter of a million dollars that had come in in those earlier years. Those are their go-go years where they want to be going and doing. They may want to do that. Knowing that down the road, they're going to have less income. At some point in time, it crosses over around age 80, 81. And so if they live beyond that age 80, 81, we see that it's better for them to wait to age 70. And it becomes quite a bit better the longer that they go. And one of the reasons that it becomes so much better is that when Jim passes away, the benefit that Joan receives is a lot less if they have started earlier. If they started the benefit right away, when he passes away, then she would have 4700 a month versus if they waited to age 60, when he passes away, she would have 6400 a month. So that's a pretty big difference for Joan down the road when she's a widow. And that is why I said, well, what if Joan started at full retirement age and Jim waited to age 70? And what we see here is that they now still have some money coming in earlier. At the point in time that uh, they reach age 70, uh, they would have had a total of about seventy six, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 that have, has come in. Um, but when Jim passes away, in this scenario, Joan gets 6400 a month the same because Jim in both cases is weighted to age 70. So her survivor widow benefit is the same in both scenarios. And it's not a big cost to them over their lifetime uh, as to the total amount of benefits that they receive. And so this could also be attractive because it brings in some money during those go-go years when they want to spend more and do more, but it also provides some protection for Joan for income late in life for her. And so I want to then look at this scenario in their retirement plan and see how this scenario looks in their retirement plan. Right off the bat, I've got, uh, this is Jim and Joan's plan projecting out over their lifetime and having them start Social Security at age 70. So they both started at age 70. And we see that their plan runs very strong. That's what we saw last time. But this time, instead of saying they turn on Social Security right away, that they both turn it on right away, we say Joan turns it on at full retirement age, but Jim waits to 70. And so I'll just show you that is entered here. Jim begins his benefit at 70. Joan begins her benefit at full retirement age. 
And if they do that, it does improve their situation. So even though they get less in Social Security by doing this, we saw that they would end up over their life expectancy getting about 50000 less in Social Security benefits. They still are ahead in the total wealth that they have. They have 129000 more in their pocket all the way out at age 100, and that's because they have allowed more of their money to grow by having some of that Social Security benefits coming in earlier uh, and being available for them to spend during those go-go years. And so that is part of how you look at Social Security. You can look at the Social Security decision by itself. Look at how much you're going to get. But then you also need to take those analysis and plug it into the retirement plan to see how it impacts all of the other pieces of your retirement plan. How does it impact the taxes you pay? How does it impact the way that your income uh, it is coming in, your cash flow is being covered each and every year, and how does it impact the growth of your wealth and the amount of money that you actually still have control of and that you are able to leave to your heirs. All of those pieces need to be looked at together in order to make the very best decision for you and your family in this Social Security decision.